Hello everybody and welcome. Today I have a very underappreciated piece of hardware, the 2009 version of the Mac Pro RAID card. I'm most probably moving out for a while and I'm not taking my server with me, I'm going to access it remotely. However, some of my you know, home care and home automation functions, they need a uh, reliable machine to run. So I got this card because my Mac, Mac Pro is going to probably be both my workstation and my server and I need it to, to remain up in case I lose a hard drive. So I intend to have a hardware RAID 5 setup. I know this is not the most performing RAID card but I can use the internal drive base, it is supported by Mac OS and well most probably the battery is dead but it should be easy to you know recondition or even buy a new one from China and it's gonna do the job. I will lose native bootcamp support but I can still uh, initialize my installation using VirtualBox and I may move my Windows installation drive to an external enclosure and you know Firewire or maybe even Thunderbolt and I should be able to be running fine. The card is very long and it should consume around 45 watts of electricity. I can see here two heat sinks. These are probably CPUs. And there is a bunch of RAM chips scattered around. I think this card has 256 megabytes of cache. And there is this huge battery here that can keep the four hard drives spinning for a while in case of power outage so you don't lose any data. The RAID card, well, macOS should be able to also import my existing RAID and have it running on the hardware. So, well, let's get to it. Before I continue, another reason um, for my interest in this card is that it doesn't have really thorough documentation on the internet, right? You find a lot of information about the computer itself and upgrades and so on, but very few people talk about this card. So I'm hoping that I'm going to make two or three videos to have it documented for posterity. And this is the way I like to retribute what I get for free uh, from the internet. The Mac Pro is already off, so I'm just going to move my Jornada away, turn it sideways, and I probably don't need to lay it on its side to install the card. I'm going to now remove the screws, the support for the holder for, you know, the card holder. I don't know how this is called in English. It's this piece of metal that holds the cards in place. And I'm going to move, I'm going to remove my USB 3 card, move my NVMe card down next to the video card. And the RAID card has to be on the top slot. So we're going to have the RAID card, the Thunderbolt card, my boot disk, and the graphics card. Well, I forgot to press the record button, but now I have the NVMe boot drive down here. And, well, you see I'm wasting an X16 slot with it, and later on I may get um, this card with four and then these, but it doesn't cover the graphics card fence at all, very little, so I will not have any cooling problems. And later on, if I decide that I don't need multiple NVMe drives, it's gonna be a good final setup for this Mac Pro. Let me get closer to show you. As you can see, on the top, the slot for the RAID card is now free. Then I have my Thunderbolt card, and down here, let me try to show you better. I have my boot NVMe, and it doesn't cover the graphic card spans. They hardly ever turn on because I don't game, but in case they do, the airflow is fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna boot the machine up and see if I still get uh, the, NV the NVMe to work. The bong is a great sign. And 
we are good to go. Excellent. I'm gonna turn the Mac Pro off and install the RAID card. So now I can see that the card is so long that I need to remove first the cooling fans. I won't be able to slot this in otherwise. Um, it should be a tool as a fair. Let's just have to pull it out. No, uh, it's not. It's not good. I didn't want to do that. So let's try just to slide the card here. No. All right. So well, here we go. Mac Pro has to go down. The Mac Pro is back up with the card installed, so let's put it up. It should take a while because the card takes 30 to 60 seconds to start up according to Apple. So we are up and it's very interesting to see that well even though now the drives are being controlled by the RAID card naturally Apple being Apple I still have all my cards all my disks here available of course this is PCIe so it doesn't count here so the four drives that are connected are fine here so this is my Windows uh, boot disk and I think boot camp is gone here I have uh, those two together uh, make an NTFS volume here we have my RAID 0 so uh, two 500 gigabyte disk and here I have uh, disk that is only for storage so RAID utility wants my attention and here I can see max fan control that well I lost the temperature of my disk drive so the OS has no access to it whatsoever my PCI fan is spinning much faster than it, it usually does I usually have around 1200 RPM after boot and it goes down to 800-900 the power supply is usually around 700-800 because I have quite a high load but now the PCI fan is going really really fast and these fans here I usually have the manual control to try to keep the north bridge uh, diode as close 70 degrees as I can and I have now the temperature for the slot 4 card available, that's the RAID card and it runs super hot, 69 degrees and um, the RAID card it says 46 so I'm not sure what the difference is because this slot 4 is where uh, the RAID card is but I have temperature for the drive base which is cool so here I'm probably reading from the SATA controller and here it's probably a sensor that gets reported by the operating system, right? And here we have memory and so on and that hasn't changed. So we can get rid of this now. I hope the PCI fan is gonna slow down because it's really annoying and loud and I may change my setup and have my computer far from me. Well, whatever, let's go to RAID Utility. I have one severe event and that is... How can I know what the severe event is? Battery failed. So that was March 2020, so that's probably the last time someone used this card. Which means that, very cool, the card saves uh, the events somewhere in the memory and the memory stays even if the card is disabled. 
here the cache is disabled due to insufficient battery charge and I'm hoping after using the computer for a while that the battery will recharge otherwise I have a second one I will buy something on eBay in China and see what happens um, so fingers crossed the battery will charge yeah? I'm not aware of the female versions or what happens between them so I don't know here I can see I'm using now software RAID by the operating system in uh, JBOD mode or if I'm actually using the card probably not the card because otherwise I'll be able to see the, the RAID sets here and yeah so JBOD um, if I create a RAID set can I migrate to my RAID 0? probably not ah, so you see I can use enhanced JBOD to improve the, the drive performance using the big cache from the RAID card I'm not gonna touch that because I'm hoping that I can still boot camp. Here I can see the battery level. What does it do? Can I just move the window? Let's see what we have here about RAID utility. Last reviewed in 2013, so Apple has not touched it in a long while. And I'm even wondering if I would install Catalina in, uh, in this computer, if I would still have the RAID utility available. Uh, preferences use shapes to indicate status aha when I do this this turns square this is super useless um, red raid can migrate a raid set that's probably if I have a raid one in the US I can verify I can use a spare disk Let's see nothing on edit menu Ah, full screen mode, that's useful. And the help. What? Of course I'm connected to the internet. Can't I? So, yeah. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try bootcamp. I'm gonna see what disks I'm using this RAID 0 here. And if there is data that I need to save or make a backup. And I'm going to try to migrate my RAID 0 to the RAID card and maybe take those three 500 gigabyte disks and turn them into a RAID 5. And if I can leave these available for Windows, I will. So let's see. I'm afraid though that my Windows disk is one of these 500 disks and that complicates my life a little bit. But Regardless, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope I will document this better in the near future, and I will see you next time. One more thing. So now I see for the first time in my life this harder RAID um, option here in system information populated. So you get Mic Pro RAID card, and well, my battery is faulty and the last date of conditioning was in 2014 so since 2014 this card is probably not in use which means that I will leave the battery in there for like a week but I find very unlikely that it will work I already know what the equivalent model and I will probably have a project uh, to replace it I have a spare battery I'm gonna post a picture down there and I will probably break that one apart, see how the connection is done, resolder it and probably have a new battery. Down here you can see that we have the four bays occupied with disks and the smart status goes through the RAID card, not the operating system, so if I go to SATA I don't get anything yeah so the SATA ports are all unpopulated except the one that's being used by the CD-ROM and they are not assigned to any bay so basically 
the rate card is capturing the bay connectors, right? But I get stuff in storage, which is cool. Uh, I probably see it connected to the rate card. Yes, instead of the SATA controller, it's using the SAS protocol. Maybe Windows would work if I would reinstall it. It's I'm make a backup of this disk and try it out. And I have Thunderbolt working. USB 3.1 bus on the Thunderbolt card and Firewire display and MV Express. So now we have a very complete machine here. Maybe I'm gonna put in just a parallel SCSI card just to have all of this populated because why not? Anyway, enough of ranting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.